Welcome to No Worries Biology. My name is Anja Doyle and today I would like to talk about the foliation of a red maple. Foliation is a botanical term that refers to the leaf development in spring in perennial deciduous plants. Every year I'm quite impressed to see how completely leafless bleak trees turn lush and green in the time span of just a few days. In my garden I have a red maple tree which is quite prominent. So let's start this video by looking at a series of pictures that show how this tree went from having nothing but buds to carrying a full canopy in a time span of just 10 days. Day 1, Day 3, Day 5, Day 7, Day 9, Day 10. And every year I'm asking myself, how do plants do that? How do they develop so much plant matter, so much tissue, in just a few days? Finding an answer to this question is what this video is really all about. So what I did is, I started my investigation by taking some measurements. Firstly, I measured the dimensions of one of the leaf buds on my maple tree. 5 millimeters by 3 millimeters by 3 millimeters. In order to calculate its volume, 45 cubic millimeters. Then I calculated the average volume of a plant cell to get an idea how many plant cells might be contained within such a leaf bud. 60 micrometers by 30 micrometers by 30 micrometers equals 54,000 cubic micrometers or 0 0.000054 cubic millimeters. So this would mean that this leaf bud might contain 830,000 cells. Next, I calculated the volume that the leaves which came out of that leaf bud possessed after 10 days. In order to do so, I determined the surface area that one of these leaves possesses and multiplied it by the thickness of the leaf. And then I multiplied the result by 6 because the average number of leaves coming out of one leaf bud, on my red maple at least, is 6. So these six new leaves combined have a volume of 9,900 cubic millimeters. This volume would be capable of holding 183 million plant cells. Would it be possible for the cells to divide fast enough to go from 830,000 to 183 million in just a few days? To keep things simple, let's assume that a cell cycle lasts 24 hours, meaning that a cell is able to divide every 24 hours. On day one, we would obviously have 830,000 cells. Day two, 1,660,000 cells. Day three, 3,320,000 cells. Day four, 6,640,000 cells, day 5, 30,280,000 cells, day 6, 26,560,000 cells, day 7, 53,120,000 cells, day 8, 106,240,000 cells, and day 9, 212,480,000 cells. So there we go. It would actually be possible to produce this enormous number of cells if all the cells did nothing else all day long but divide and prepare for the next division and then divide again and prepare for the next division again and so on for nine days. But wait a minute, think about it. Where would all the energy and the materials needed for these repeated cell divisions come from? It requires a whole lot of energy to duplicate the genetic material and to divide it correctly amongst the daughter cells and to multiply the cell organelles and so on and so forth. And this would not just happen in one leaf bud, which I used to do my calculations on, 
but in all the thousands and thousands of leaf buds that are scattered all over my red maple tree. So this is obviously not what happens at all. Plus, I completely ignored one important fact. In multicellular organisms, cells fulfill specific tasks. And in order to do so, they take on a specific shape and composition. And these differentiated cells usually don't divide very often or not at all. So this is actually another reason why the assumption that all the cells in a growing leaf would just constantly divide is just plain wrong. Plants have specific tissues of undifferentiated cells, which are responsible for creating new cells and tissues. These tissues are called meristems, and the cells found within them are called meristematic cells. They are stem cells that can produce any type of differentiated cell found within the plant body. The meristematic cells responsible for our leaf development are found at the bottom of the leaf bud. So what actually happens is that long before the tree shows its foliage in spring, those meristematic cells produce lots and lots of tiny, not fully developed plant cells that are much smaller than regular plant cells because, for example, they don't possess a central vacuole yet. The energy and materials needed by these meristematic cells to create all of those new leaf cells is stored within the tree itself. Before the tree throws off the leaves of the previous year in fall, it retrieves as much of the materials stored within them as possible. So the meristematic cells can use them again when creating all the new cells in preparation for spring. And when spring is here, millions of not quite fully developed plant cells are already contained within the leaf buds. Once the buds open in spring, each plant cell takes in lots and lots of water to develop its central vacuole. And this results in an enormous increase in volume per cell. Within each cell, some cell organelles also get more or less prominent in order for that cell to take on the specific shape and composition that is needed for the function it is designated to fulfill. So in summary, the speedy process of foliation, which we can observe, for example, in trees, is not caused by millions and millions of cells dividing all the time, but by the growth and differentiation of many already existing embryonic cells. And this doesn't make it any less fascinating, because now you could ask yourself, how does the plant actually manage to coordinate all these events? How does each cell know what it's designated to do? But those are questions for different videos, because this is it for today. On www.noworriesbiology.com, you can find all kinds of materials on cells and other topics of biology. Just have a look around and see if there's anything you like.